Next topic is Hibernate caching. Uh, by the way, I have actually modified the slides as well as hands-on labs as of this morning. So you might want to download the uh, hands-on lab uh, if you have uh, if you have uh, old version of it uh, that has been uh, changed significantly. So make sure you actually download it again. So here we're going to talk about the types of Hibernate cache, and uh, so in fact we're going to look into three different uh, caches, types of cache. Uh, first level cache, second level cache, and uh, query cache. And uh, later on, we're going to actually also see how we can get statistical uh, data, including uh, these cache statistics. Okay. So types of Hibernate cache. So what is caching? Caching, obviously, uh, it is actually for optimizing database applications. So. Uh, uh, it's basically for uh, reducing uh, traffic between your application to the database uh, by caching the data that have been already loaded from the database. Okay. So database access is required uh, only when retrieving data that is not currently available in the cache. Uh, the application may need to empty or invalidate the cache from time to time if the database is updated or modified uh, in some way because uh, it doesn't have a way of actually figuring out you know, if uh, the cache is in fact invalid or not, meaning if somebody has changed uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, in different channel, uh, then uh, uh, the, your application might actually have to uh, um, ca uh, invalidate or empty the cache once in a while. Okay, types of Hibernate cache. Uh, so for caching objects, so there are two different categories. One is for caching objects and the other one is for caching a query and its result. So for caching objects, uh, there are two different types, first level cache and the second level cache. Uh, and the first level cache is associated with the session object, while the second level cache is associated with session factory object. And I'm going to talk about the differences between these two in the following slide. Okay. Uh, by the way, first level cache is uh, enabled by default, and I don't think there is a way that you can turn it off. Okay. Second level cache is something that you have to configure. Okay, so as a default, there is no several level second level cache enabled. And uh, same thing for query cache. Uh, you have to configure query cache. So let's talk about each of these in a bit more detail. First level cache. So this is how the uh, first level, uh, second level cache works. Okay, so uh, for Hibernate session, that is the uh, first level cache. So this is per session, and the second level cache is for session factory. Okay, so it's a wider uh, the uh, the uh, scope, and the same data could be actually in uh, first level cache as well as in the second level cache. Uh, so first level cache is maintained per session and uh, there are a few APIs that you can use in your application to uh, manipulate it. Uh, session clear, it will remove all entries from the first level cache. Uh, session evict, evict uh, you specify a particular object then it will remove a part particular entry from the first level cache. And you can also check whether a particular entry is in the first level cache or not by calling contains. So let's see how a first level cache works. Uh, so first level cache is associated with a session object and other session object in the application cannot sit. So each session object will have its own first level cache. Okay. The scope of cache object is of session. So once a session is closed, uh, cache the objects are gone forever. Okay. Uh, first level cache is enabled by default and you cannot disable it. So when we when we query an ent entity for the first time, it is retrieved from the database and is stored in the first level cache associated with that session. And if you query the same object again with the same session object, it will be loaded from that first level cache and there is no SQL query uh, to be executed. So pretty straightforward. And uh, the loaded entity will be uh, removed from the session using evict method. So if you are using evict, it will be removed. Okay. Uh, the next loading of this entry will again make a database call uh, if it has not been if it has been if it has been removed using evict call uh, evict method, and again the whole session cache could be removed using clear method, and it will remove all entities stored in the cache. 
All right, so let's do our first exercise, first level cache. Okay, so first level cache, uh, basically we are going to run Hibernate first level cache project. Okay, and uh, basically what we are going to observe, uh, let's actually run this guy to make sure it's running first level cache. Oh, I have an import. So import, import Maven project, and uh, let's elapse. like this is the old code. Uh, let me just remove this guy. Yeah, it contains the old one, so I'm gonna actually import from the correct location. And uh, that is... Okay, so first level cache. So uh, we are going to run the application. And this is what you are going to see. Okay, so let's actually uh, go over the things. Uh, so basically, we are going to uh, perform a query for the first time. So it will perform a database call to the uh, the uh, to the database. So it will make a select call to the database. Okay. Uh, then read it first after yes. Yeah, so then we are going to actually read second time after query, and you can see uh, you know that uh, the uh, uh, product is in the session. Uh, it's actually in the session and. Uh, then we are going to perform uh, eviction, so we're going to call uh, evict, okay? And then you can, if you try to read it again, it will make another call to the database, okay? So that's basically what it's doing. So if you take a look at the code, uh, we are going to perform a first query, so it will make a call to the database, and uh, we can actually read it. And then this second read, this is going to read from uh, the first level cache. Okay, so this one should not cause any database call to uh, the uh, to the database. Okay, and you can certainly check whether that uh, product is in the session or not. Okay, and then we are going to call evict. So now we are bumping that uh, product out from the first level cache. Okay, and uh, and now if you actually call the uh, session contains, and uh, it should uh, it should say false. Okay. So uh, it you know is basically evict from not only from the cache but from the uh, session itself. Okay, and uh, then if we call and then if you call the uh, get again, then it will uh, it will uh, you know uh, make a call to the uh, the database. Okay, and then we can get it again. Okay, and this one should not cause uh, the uh, database call because it's reading from the cache. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Okay, so I'll give you five minutes to try this. So that is the first level cache that is always enabled. Now let's move on to second level cache. So second level cache keeps loaded objects at the session factory level across transaction boundaries. So it is being used by all the sessions uh, created from the session factory. So the objects in the second level cache is available to the whole application, not just to the user. Uh, running the query. So this way each time query returns an object that is already loaded in the cache, one or more database transactions potentially can be avoided. Okay? Uh, the second level cache provider can be pluggable. In fact, there are uh, several uh, third-party implementations available. So this is how things work. Uh, this is actually working, uh, this is actually describing how first cache and second level cache work together. 
So whenever Hibernate session try to load an entity, uh, the very first place it look for cached copy of entity in the is in the first level cache. So it will try to find it in the first level cache. That makes sense, right? Okay. And if uh, entity uh, is found in the first level cache, it is returned as a result of load or get method. That makes sense. However, if the first level cache does not have that entity, then second level cache is looked up. Again, makes sense, right? So if the second level cache has entity, then it is returned as a load method. Okay? But this is important. But before returning the entity, it is stored in the first level cache. Okay? So that the next invocation to load method for the entity will return from the first cache rather than second cache. Okay? Uh, so uh, the uh, the uh, so you know in a scenario where the cache I mean entity is only in the second cache when it is actually read uh, now first level cache is also uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, stopped up in a sense uh, the entity is going to be uh, cached in the first level cache okay and we're going to actually play around this one later on okay and if entity is not found in the first level cache and also is not found in the sub second level cache and then of course uh, database query is going to be performed okay and then the entity is going to be stored in both cache levels okay uh, so uh, the uh, you know once it's read from the database both first level cache and second level cache will have an entity okay uh, second level cache validate itself for modified entities. So if the modification has been done through Hibernate session API, so uh, the uh, if there is something is modified, then uh, it will invalidate it. Okay. Uh, if some user or process make changes directly to the database, there is no way for the second level cache update itself until uh, timeout. Okay. So you can certainly specify timeout timeout for that. Okay. Uh, so the uh, you know when the time things out, it is a good idea to invalidate the whole cache and let the Hibernate build this cache once again. All right, so that's how things work. Uh, the uh, 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 with the first level cache and second level cache together. Uh, second level cache implementations. So there are several third party uh, the cache implementations: eCache, OS Cache, and Swarm Cache, and JBoss Three Cache. So eCache is fast, lightweight, and easy to use in process cache. So that's the one uh, we are going to use in our hands-on app. And it supports read-only and read-write caching and memory and disk-based caching. However, it does not support clustering. Okay, So in production and environment, this might not be a good choice. OS Cache is part of the larger package. also provides caching functionalities for GSP pages or arbitrary objects. Uh, it is more powerful than eCache. Uh, the uh, uh, the uh, um, oh, it is a powerful and flexible package which, like eCache, supports read-only and uh, the uh, read and write caching and memory and disk level caching. Uh, however, it supports the uh, clustering as well. Okay, so in that sense, it's more powerful than eCache. And Swarm Cache is simple cluster-based caching solution based on Java groups. Uh, supports only read-only or non-strict read and write caching. And I just uh, these are all for your information. So JBoss 3 cache is powerful, replicated, and transactional cache. Use use this solution if you really need a true transaction capable caching architecture. Okay, so uh, second level cache strategies. Uh, so you can use read only, you can use read and write, non-strict read and write, or transactional. Okay. So you know depending on uh, the the uh, uh, the implementations that we just saw, you know, different Im implementations support different set of uh, caching strategies. So read only useful for data that is read read frequently but never updated, uh, and simplest and best performing cache strategy. So you know, if your application is pretty much read only, then this is actually probably the one that you want to use as a strategy. Uh, so this is how you are going to specify the uh, in XML file uh, the caching strategy, okay? Cache element like this, and of course you can specify this caching strategy in uh, the source code using the annotation, okay? Read and write is a good solution if your data needs to be updated, and they of course uh, carry more overhead than read-only caches. Of course, in non-JTA environment, each transaction should be completed with session close or session disconnect. 
okay, and uh, this is how you're going to specify VDN, right? Nothing much different from read only. And non-strict cache uh, does not guarantee that two transactions owned simultaneously modify the same data. So it may be most appropriate for data that is read often but occasionally modified. And the last one is transactional. So this is the uh, fully tran transactional cache that may be used only in JTA environment. Okay, so JBoss tree cache is the only one that supports transactional caching strategy. Okay, so let's do exercise two. So exercise two, let me let's actually run this guy first. Okay, let me just change the uh, experimentation I've done. Uh, so if you run this code, okay. If you run this code, what you are going to see is uh, the uh, uh, we are performing load operation, and there is no database operation here. And then, uh, in this case, you can see uh, the second level cache hit count is two, meaning. Uh, the entity was retrieved from the second level cache twice. Okay, uh, the uh, number of misses zero and the number of put is zero. Okay, and uh, in this case, now we are actually clearing second level cache. So there is nothing in the sec second level cache, and uh, then we are performing load operation again. Then you can see one uh, the uh, select call is made to the database and uh, then you can see second level miscount is one so it reads it here and then save it in both uh, second level cache as well as first level cache so let me actually explain the code uh, and then you know the I'll let you uh, we'll like to do some more, more experimentation as well uh, yeah first of all let's actually take a look at all the code that yeah so this is what we have just observed as a result okay and uh, the code is uh, now you have to configure second level cache in your configuration file. So we are actually using eCache, okay? And uh, for your uh, mapping file, uh, you are going to specify caching strategy. So for supplier, we are going to actually read only supplier. So we don't have to change, we don't have to set this one for product, but we're going to actually do both. So caching strategy is read and write. Okay, and this is for collection. And for product, we're going to actually do the same thing. Caching usage is read and write. Okay, now this is the main code. Uh, the, uh, so this, what we're going to do is this. So what happens is that when you are actually doing uh, in a select call, uh, it will be uh, cached in both the first and second level cache. Okay, so now we are going to actually enable statistics. So statistics will be captured from this point. Okay. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to clear first level cache, okay? And then we are going to, uh, so, you know, the, the, the goal of this exercise is to see what's happening in the second level cache. So that's the reason, you know, we want to actually remove things from the first level cache so that the second level cache is being used. So in this case, the second level cache is going to be used. So we are going to load first, okay? And uh, so, because second level cache has this, uh, by the way, we are just you know retrieving a single uh, the uh, the uh, supplier object whose uh, object ID is one. Okay, so this time it will read from second level cache. Okay, now once it read from the second level cache, it will save in the first level cache here, at this point. Okay. And uh, so next time you're loading it, it's going to load it from the first level cache instead of the second level cache. Okay? All right? Now, here we are going to evict the first level cache. So now if you try, if you load again, it will read from the second level cache. So that's the reason that now we are actually displaying the statistics. So up to this point, what you're actually seeing is this guy. So second level cache is hit twice. Okay, because the, this time is getting from second level cache, this one is getting from the first level cache, and now because if we evict this first level cache, we are actually getting from the uh, second level cache again. Okay, so that's why we are getting two. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to clear the first level cache as well. 
uh, so the second level cache. So we are clearing everything from the second level cache. Okay. And now we, before we do that, let's actually do uh, actually let's do that that exercise later on. Okay. So you know what I was gonna do is I was gonna actually evict this one over here. Okay. So in that case, it's going to actually increase to three. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to clear all the second level cache. Okay. Now when we actually read it here, now it's going to uh, read from the first level cache, right? Because uh, the uh, you know the first level cache now should have an entity, right? And uh, then we are going to uh, the uh, yeah. So this is exactly the same code as here. Okay. The only difference is that we actually uh, the uh, uh, we uh, clear all the second level cache. Okay, so I'm going to show that code in a minute. Okay, so second level cache is all cleared out. Okay, so this one is going to get the first level cache, and uh, then it's going to, yeah. So both of these will actually get the first level cache because first level cache has has it, and then we are going to uh, the uh, the uh, evict even from the first level cache. Now we are going to call this guy. Now because you know the uh, neither first level and uh, the second level has the entity, this one will cause uh, select. So that's what you are going to see here. Okay. So in this case, this is two that is coming from here, and uh, you know it is missed once, and then it retrieved it, and then we save it here. So two one one. Okay. Now the uh, the exercise what we are gonna do is uh, the the modification that I want you to try is uh, let's actually do in this case uh, the first time okay so in, in this case you know we are gonna evict this entity even here okay. All right. So in this case, uh, the entity is in the second level cache, but because we are evicting from the first level cache, uh, you know. So in this case, let's see what happens. If you run it, you can see it is actually getting from second from second level cache only because uh, each time we evict from the first level cache. Okay, and uh, the rest of the operation is uh, pretty much the same. Okay, uh, now in terms of you know the clearing up the second level cache, so basically you know we get the all the meta class in the session factory, and uh, you know then we are evicting entity from the sec second session factory. Okay, so this is a way that you are clearing up all the entities in the second level cache. Okay. And uh, this is the statistics. You know, there is actually statistics object, which you can call a bunch of uh, statistics related uh, method. And here we are basically displaying only the uh, hit count, miss count, and put count. Uh, in the palm.xml file, uh, because we are using eCache, uh, we have to actually have that dependency. Okay? All right, so that is exercise two. I'm going to give you about 15 minutes to try this exercise. So query cache is uh, a third type of third type of cache. So the query cache, the difference between query cache from the other two, the first level and second level cache, is as we talked about. Uh, this is actually for caching a query and its result. It's not really caching object. Okay. Uh, and uh, so by the way, it's always used with the second level cache. So this is an example. Suppose we have created a query of uh, this uh, from person is p. This is actually uh, you know the uh, query uh, object, and then we are setting uh, these positional parameters. Okay, and uh, then you are going to set uh, this query as a cacheable. So when you call set cacheable true, uh, it will be cached in query cache. Okay. And uh, so the query cache at this point will cache uh, the things, the combination of queries, so this one, and the values that you specify for these positional parameters, and uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, and the result. Okay. Uh, so basically, it will uh, it will you know it will just uh, the uh, 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 it will just get the uh, yeah. So it basically, you know, the uh, caching the uh, query. And its parameters. 
Okay, so let's do exercise three. So this is for query cache. So let's take a look at the lab doc documentation. So here, what we are going to do is uh, the um, uh, uh, you know we are going to actually try with a case where query cache is not uh, enabled. So we're going to try with the uh, disabled first. Okay, so let's say disabled. And uh, when you run the application. Uh, you're going to see is actually performing uh, the query operation, uh, the select operation to the database. Okay, uh, in fact, four of them. Okay, uh, so you can see the uh, query has not been. So yeah, so we actually have uh, the uh, uh, this is select statement, uh, and uh, uh, you can run this application at the command line. So if you take a look at the code, okay. Uh, so we are going to actually perform the same query three times here and here and here and each time is actually going to go to the database okay because this query has not been cached all right so there is nothing that you know that says the uh, this query is cached so now to 3.3 we are going to enable this cache okay so what we have to do is we have to add these three lines of uh, properties. So you have to use with the second level cache. So this is the same uh, the configuration that we have for the eCache. And the thing that you are going to add uh, relevant to query cache is this: Hibernate cache use query cache true. Okay. And then in your main code, you have to actually call for each query. You have to uh, for query object, you have to call set cacheable to true. Okay. Well, actually, in this case, you know, we probably just need once, okay? Because we are, you know, using the same query anyway, right? So this, the second and third, probably is not needed. Now, when you run the application, now you can see uh, the first time it made a query, it will be cached, and from this point on, it will not, uh, you know, the uh, perform, it will not, uh, the, uh, uh, um, uh, it will not uh, incur uh, the uh, select statement to the database, okay? All right, so I'm going to give you guys five minutes to try this. Okay. If I remove it, then it's interesting.
Okay, so the last one is Hibernate Statistics. Uh, so Hibernate provides uh, the st statistics, uh, the object. Uh, so you can call uh, get statistics method uh, from session factory and then you can get the statistics object and that actually captures uh, you know, your statistics. Uh, and uh, it does have a bunch of uh, the, uh, the statistical uh, information. Uh, or you can actually, you know, you can get the uh, statistics information through JMX, but here we're going to actually work on statistics object. So statistics interface, uh, so provides a number of metrics uh, from very basic to specialized information only relevant to certain scenarios. Uh, so like, let's say session usage, such as the number of open sessions and the retrieved JDBC connections, uh, matrix related to entities, collections, queries, and caches and the detailed matrix related to particular entity collection query and cache region. So if you just search for statistics, uh, you know, just Google the um, Google um, Statistics uh, API, uh, Hibernate Statistics, uh, then, uh, you know, you're going to actually see Statistics API and uh, you can see uh, lots of uh, statistical information okay entity load count entity names uh, flush count uh, uh, the uh, uh, all executed query strings uh, execution count and uh, and also uh, second level uh, cache this is something that we uh, used uh, when we find out the uh, second level cache is being uh, used or not. Okay, so second level cache, uh, the hit, miss, and put. Okay, so in the um, so basically uh, you are going to get the statistic subject and then you just call this method. Okay, so let's do exercise four. So exercise four is basically the same uh, query cache enabled uh, code, and here we are going to display a bunch of uh, statistics. Okay, so let's run this guy. So we are displaying the time, global number of collections fetched, query cache hit. Uh, and uh, entity fetch count, how many times you know, entity is fetched from the, the uh, database. Uh, we are not dealing with any second level cache here and uh, the uh, uh, entity, all the entities uh, the, uh, of the session factory and uh, how, you know, how many times that particular entity has been changed. So in this case product has been changed just once. Okay? So I'll give you guys a few minutes to try this exercise and that is the end of the presentation.